Shkoda më kojë ndish në kaz, u abëgje e shqie ndo dhe më shka zibi në ndo në gjëbar. Në sing në më deo, u i du ka është në që ma në do, që kua e kope më së janë ma king. I ask that I continue to walk in a good way. I think that's one of the hardest things to do as an Indian person. I think if there's anything that has happened as a result of this school, it was I became a better Indian person. It helped to nudge me in the direction of being a good human being, of walking carefully and gently on the earth. And I'm really grateful for that. The whole idea of a community college in Cloquet, the conversation for it started years and years and years ago. The leadership on the reservation really wanted the education factor here. There was no community college presence here, and for a lot of reservation folks, the jeopardy there was you've left home to go get educated in the dominant society system, and then you want to come back here and do good things for your tribe, your people, what have you, but you've gone away and that automatically kind of makes you a little suspect about coming home. The early beginnings of this school probably started at the coffee shop. People would go to the coffee shop and meet and talk. And then sometimes what they talked about um, was repeated often enough so people thought something was happening. When I was working as the executive director for Fond du Lac, I was approached by Don Weeson and Fred McDougall. And they said, you know, let's see if we can't breathe some light into this whole idea. And at that point in time, I thought, you know, it, it, it looks like you guys are going to be chasing the wind here. I don't see it. They said, well, let us try it anyway. And so they did. The challenges, I think, was trying to convince both our tribal people, the downtown people, the state legislature that this was a possibility. And uh, we worked on that for many, many, many years to put together a concrete plan that everyone could read. The first thing to try to bring uh, a college here is we worked the state of Minnesota. We worked it for a community college, and then we also worked for a tribal college. One is a federal program, one, the other one was a state program. And we were successful at the state level of getting some dollars. There's a task force that was set up to explore the idea for having a college in, in this community. And then through work of this task force, they were able to open Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College Center. We were an extension of um, Masabi Community College. And basically we offered their curriculum at the time. The Garfield Building was where Fond du Lac started. It was unique. I mean, there was at one time in one room, there was six of us, and that was the business office, it was the bookstore, it was, I mean, everybody worked out of there, so we were a one room shop for all the business stuff for the college. We had the one or two main offices, but we also only had one or two classrooms. One of the classrooms was a, a large one in the basement that was separated by a folding door so that when two classes were being conducted at the same time, you could hear the other instructor talking. And, and one of our instructors, I remember, was uh, very vociferous and would pound and so forth. And so sometimes the other classes would kind of think, oh, what's going on over there? Uh, our student body back then was very, very non-traditional. 
probably the, the most prevalent demographic we had were female students in their mid-30s to mid-40s. And you had better have your stuff together in a classroom because these women would chew you up and spit you out if you're trying to sell them a big load of crap. Uh, you had to be on your toes all the time and know what the hell you talked about. And it really was quite demanding. The Garfield Building, as a, as a community center, I think was, an, was a good place to start because it, it was inviting. It had this whole essence about it, but it wasn't the building. It was all about the people. Back in the Garfield days, there were so few of us that we had to be very cooperative in what we did, which is not to say we didn't have conflicts from time to time, but I think we all understood that we were all moving in the same direction to build this place. At that point in time, we grew a little bit, and we were able to take the planning dollars we had, submit our report to the state legislature, and then garnish the votes necessary to get funding for uh, a campus. But it wasn't that easy, because we had the dollars, but they weren't in our hand. There was a change in leadership at the state. The new governor coming on said he wanted to look at the state budget put everything on hold. As a result of that, the people back here, they said to hell with that noise, and they grouped together, got buses, got a hold of their uh, representatives, and they went in mass down to the state, down to the capital, and they started banging on doors and talking to people. And they said, you know, that's our college, we want it. The significant people that really made a difference was our former chairman, Bill Hool, Chuck Smith, Don Leeson. We had Marianne Walt, Ruth Myers, who was on the school board in Duluth, joined in. And then, of course, we got the support of Representative Mary Murphy. We had Sandra Shabayash. We had Mike Rabidou. And we had this great group of people, plus we were blessed with one of the best lobbyists, Randy Azuma, that I've ever worked with. And I must say that had it not been for Senator Florian Chmielewski, uh, at about 2 a.m. in the morning, tacking on our little $6.9 million bill into a larger bill and getting it through, uh, I'm not so sure that we would have gotten the money that year. I was involved in, in that planning with the tribe and with the community. Uh, from the very beginning, and I, I listened to all of them, and they certainly convinced me that there was an underserved area, and they wanted something to happen, and we helped make it happen. Of all of the things that happened under my watch, I have to say that the Fond du Lac Community College becoming a reality was actually the number one. I know there are all kinds of other projects that were immense projects, but this one is really the most outstanding, and I just want to congratulate uh, this college for what they've done and they're filling a wonderful void for providing good quality education to this community. We moved to our current location in August of 92. I remember that, that was exciting. Leaving the Garfield building one semester ending, and then coming to the new building the very next semester. I mean, I remember walking into the halls and going, oh my God, look at this, wow, wow. Because the Garfield building was small rooms with little teeny desks, and then you come into this state-of-the-art modern building that was just beautiful, and just kind of go, wow, check this out, yeah, right on, yeah. We were so in awe because not that it was totally finished, but we could move in. And wow, colorful, circular, beautiful classrooms. And of course, no matter where you go in this building, almost everywhere you can look out the window and see trees. It was just like a dream. I don't think he could have wiped a smile off people's face. I mean, they were so happy and the building's so beautiful. It's uh, very different, you know, architecturally. Uh, uh, 1992, I remember getting very emotional. It, it just was an exciting time to actually know that we had a, a real building and, you know, sometimes you, people might not have recognized us as a true college. People like in the system, you know, other colleges. Um, but now we had our own building and, and we, we had 
had a place to place to be finally. You know, we're entering our 25th year, and as you look back over the 25 years, milestones to me are each time a new phase of the building was added to the institution. Our enrollment has gone up every year since I started working here in 1998. Building housing and how we made a mix of housing. Again, look into who our student body is and try to serve them as best we can. A huge milestone for me was when President Anderson got hired. The vibe in that room on that day, you know, there wasn't a dry eye in the place when Larry got handed that staff. I remember the gal from HR at the systems office. I mean, she was even crying, and it wasn't just the speeches or anything. I think it, it was just everybody was happy to have him be the president. And then our athletic program here in the last couple of years. I think adding athletics adds another piece to our college and the college experience. You know, we have the thunder now, so we, you know, you can kind of hang your hat on that. A couple other milestones would be the start of the law enforcement program, the nursing program. We've always had human services, and so many of our students are in, in that field as well. Those three programs have been kind of the bread and butter of this institution, and they've been around for, for quite a while. One of the sad milestones, of course, was uh, the death of Jack Briggs. It was a very sad occasion, but it was very memorable because this was his dream, and this was something that just started out as an idea, and it just blossomed. And not everybody agreed with Jack all the time, but we all loved him because, because of this dream. Without Jack Briggs, this college wouldn't be here today. There may be something similar to it, but it wouldn't be what it is today. Jack Briggs means everything to this institution. He was fearless. He had a sense of humor. I call him the trickster. He was a vision person. He, he always wanted to be on the cutting edge of things. He always said, you know, go do whatever you do, whatever the hell that is, and have fun. If you need help, let me know. And. Uh, Somebody gives you a hard time, let me know. He had charisma. He was he did something to a room when he walked in. He was he was he was good. Jack was an incredible leader and uh, politically very astute. If you could give him your vision of how things ought to be, Jack would take that and he would make it his own and then sell it. And he was very good at that. We could go out to Washington, DC to lobby. Here's Jack, he's got a BA degree, working on his master's. He could go out there and lobby with the best of them. He was always mindful of what the reservation wanted and what the tribal council wanted, yet he still had to meet the direction of what the systems office or his bosses needed. There were some times when he would come back looking beaten up from, you know, from both sides and, and but he'd keep, he'd, he'd keep working. He just loved this place and so he would, he would do whatever he could to make it work. Jack would be proud of the college, um, the community, where Fond du Lac has gone. I think he'd be surprised that some of the old faces are still here and that people that were here from the beginning, not only are still here, but have become instrumental in the operation and ongoing development of this institution. He'd be excited about how our academic programs have grown and the number of students, and that we have sports programs now. He'd be mad that we don't have hockey, but, but you know what the first thing that he would say is, what are we gonna do next? What are you gonna do tomorrow? How are we gonna keep improving this institution? How are we going to keep people from eating our lunch, or how are we going to be extraordinary? When he died, I did write a poem about him. I can't recite it verbatim, 
what I did because he used to always use this word, extraordinary. He used to always say that. Extraordinary, extraordinary, that, that was his word. And so I wrote a poem that was entitled that. And uh, I guess that's what we could say, that he was extraordinary. Fond du Lac is, is a unique gem in actually in, in the United States. Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College is the only college in the country that is, is twofold. We are recognized as a tribal college and then we are also recognized as an official Minsky school. And so we have this partnership and it's the only kind in the country. This school is, is a broader experiment. And the reality is about 30% of our students are American Indian and 70% of our students are non-Indian. And so the tribal perspective, people will look at us and, and say, well, you're not really a tribal school. But we are. If you look at this building, the architecture, the symbolism, everything here is set up in a way where the tribal piece is recognized as being at least equal. We graduate a huge population of American Indian students, and it's very comparable to any institution in the state, and that includes other tribal colleges. Students come from across the United States to come here. Students come from certainly within Minnesota to come here because we're a tribal and community college. I think Fond du Lac is unique because it, uh, it has a part of its mission, a meeting of cultures. It identifies that people come from different places and that they bring with them other ideas, other things, other strengths that we can learn from. I think it's interesting. We combine all these people from all these segregated communities and you would think that it wouldn't work. And instead, we are pluralism at its best. As far as who we are and what we should be, I think about being a place that has a very eclectic group of people, well-versed in higher education, academics, what have you, who genuinely care about people. We have an absolutely great faculty and staff here. I'm just proud that I'm allowed to come here and come to work every day. I do feel a lot of pride in working for Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College. I think that pride that, that everybody has about this place is, is, is pretty neat. You know, it's just the way you feel around this place and everybody really uh, cares about why we're here. This is a place of hope. It's a life center. It has a soul. It has a spirit. It has an effect on everybody that walks through the doors. I wouldn't be where I'm at today without this college. By having this, you know, college right here, I was able to, to get my degree and to become a law enforcement officer here. If Fond du Lac wasn't here, I don't think I would have went to college. I think I probably would have found somebody to take care of me instead of taking care of myself and other people. I'd just like to say that um, miigwech to you know the, the people that um, gave us this opportunity to be able to have this college here, and miigwech to the the staff you know for helping me become who I am today. The last 25 years of this college is uh, it's a remarkable situation. Because what it amounts to is there are very few people thought this could ever be a reality. I don't think that uh, when I was privileged enough to be a part of the initial building of this college that I could have envisioned where we're at now. I had a bit of a dream, but I, not like this. You know, occasionally I'll just drive around and look at the building and say, how the hell did we all do that? And how many hands we're a part of building it. There's not one person. There are hundreds of people. People that played a role in making all this happen. <laughs>